to another edition of Tic Tac Doe right here on the DGSA. Glad to have y'all with us once again. Got some great games in store for you guys today. And being we're filming this episode on Election Day, we got a lot of presidential trivia up on the board for today. So hopefully your players will take advantage of that. But let's meet our first two players for this first game of Tic Tac Doe here today. Starting in the exposition, he's my current reigning interim champion with whose one game cash winnings total $7,400. It's Kevin. Kevin, welcome back to Tic Tac Doe. Hi, Brandon. Thanks for having Fantastic. me back. Fantastic. Uh, have you thought about what you're going to do with the money? Oh, man. i got a ton of student loans to pay off, so that will be first. And then I'd love to take a trip out of the country because I've never been out of the country well, before. Well, we'll see if we can help add on to taking care of some of those bills for you if you can get back to the bonus round once again here today. But you got a tough opponent to go through in order to do that. So let's meet our circle player playing out of the opposition. It's Steve. Steve, welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. Fantastic. So I got I got to ask you, being your baseball fan, how did you feel about the Cubs yeah. winning the World Series? Because I know you're an Orioles fan. Mm hmm. I didn't really care who won, but the Cubs definitely deserved it. I'm glad they did win. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. A lot of people said that was a long time coming for them. Yep. I mean, 100 what eight years or something, years. or 106. Yeah. I mean, just. It definitely deserved. I mean, both teams really did, but the Cubs deserved it more, and I'm glad they really did win it. They I agree it. as well. Well, best of luck to you as well today. So if you guys are ready, let's take it right up to the board, game board here, and let's take a look at our first nine subjects for this game of Tic-Tac-Toe. And they are... We have movies, presidential trivia, language, bonus category, pop culture, take a letter, auction, the secret category, and past, present, and future. All right, okay, as you know, the bonus category get, it's a three part question. Get all three parts correct, and you can get another turn immediately. The auction category I give you a subject that has 10 answers to it. You bid back and forth of how many of those 10 answers you think you can give correctly. If you can, you get the box. If not, your opponent can steal the category from you by giving me any of the remaining correct answers. And of course, the secret category lets you double everything in the pot if you get the question correct, okay? Episode 22 underway here on Tic Tac Toe. We're going to start with our reigning interim champion, Steve. Steve, uh, Sorry, excuse me, Kevin. My bad. I had the names backwards in my sheet right. here. Kevin, you're starting off soft today. Where would you like to begin? Um, Let's go with pop culture. Pop culture in the center. It's a two-part question for $300, and you'll have some extra time to think about it, okay? In the category of pop right. culture... There are, in the famous movie Anchorman, there are four actors that played the leading roles of the news team for the movie. All I need you to do is name at least two of them. All right, here's your extra time to think about it. All right, Kevin. Just name right. two of the actors that play the news team in Anchorman. Okay. Um, Will Ferrell is That's one. one. And I really, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. I'm going to have to take a guess. I'm not sure. Um, Elizabeth Banks? No, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Ah. The answers I have here are Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, David Cochner. And Steve Carell. Those are the, those uh, are the four yes. of the team that played the team on Anchorman. All right, well, no box there. That's okay. Still in the game. We'll shuffle the categories around. And Steve, you get your first shot at the board. Where are we going? Movies. Movies, upper left-hand corner. Here comes your question under movies. What's the name of the Cool Disguise gang in the movie Grease? The T-Birds. T-Birds is correct. Put a no on the board. Well done. $200 now in the pot. We'll shuffle the kid. And Kevin, we're back to you. Um, let's try the center again. Movies. Here's again, again, a two-part question in movies. Here's your... And you'll get some extra time to think about it, okay? In the category of movies, here's your first question. In what 2009 film does Sandra Bullock take a future NFL lineman into her home? Name the movie. That's the first one. And the second one... Which musical comedy had a tagline of they'll never get caught, they're on a mission from God? Name the movie. All right, here's your extra time to think about it. All right, 
right, Kevin, which one would you like to answer first? Um, let's go with... That's the first one. I think I know the Sandra Bullock yes, movie. In what 2009 film does Sandra Bullock take a future NFL lineman into her home? Is that Blindside? Is correct. And now, for the set of box of three hundred dollars, which musical comedy had a tagline of "They'll never get caught. They're on a mission from God." Name the movie. Oh, musical comedy. I'm not I'm sure. Not sure. Um, Guess into the woods. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I know it. Right, what is it, Alex? It's one of my favorites, the Blues yes, Brothers. Yes, that is correct, uh, the Blues Brothers, because they are on a mission from God to save the um, orphanage where they have, I believe, they had grown up originally. So, all right, no, all right, right, no box there, but we'll shuffle them around. We got two hundred dollars still in the pot. And Kim, I'm sorry, Steve, it's your selection. What's um the second box next, next to, to the O is sorry. movies. I'll okay. go with that. Movies in the <clears throat> top center. Here's your question on the movies. What horror film features? What horror film? Here's Jack Nicholson announce. Here's Jenny. The Shining that is correct. Good job. Put another O on the board. Yeah. One of my favorites. Got four hundred dollars in the pot. Let's shuffle. And Kevin, we're over to you. I'll have to go uh, for the block past, present, and future. All right, get this question correct. Under past, present, and future, we'll have a block. All right, here's your question. Under past, present, and future, what is the principally spoken language in the Dominican Republic? What is the main language spoken in the country of the Dominican Republic? For the block, name it. Um, I know it's... I'm just going to go with the obvious way I think it's Spanish. Spanish is correct. You've got the block. Well done. Oh, okay. Put an X on the board. $600 now on the block. As we shuffle. All right. And control now goes back to Steve. Pop culture. Pop culture, left side of the board. Here comes your question under pop culture. All right, Steve, under pop culture, here's your question. In what East Coast state was actor Denzel Washington born? East Coast state? Mm -hmm. Um... Um, only one I can think of is New York. New York is correct. Good job. All right. Wow. Nicely okay. done. Put another L on the board there. We got $800 now in the pot. Let's shuffle the categories. And we're back to you, Kevin. All right. Uh, secret category. Secret category, lower left-hand corner. Get this question correct under the secret category. You'll have a vertical block, and we'll double everything in the pot to sixteen hundred dollars. Here comes, here comes your question under the secret category. The category is movies this time. Who played the leading role in the movie Ben Hur? Once again, who played the leading role in the movie Ben Hur? Is it A. Kirk Douglas, B. Burt Lancaster, C. Victor Mature, or D. Charleston Heston? Hmm. Um, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess Charleston. Uh, Charleston Heston. Charleston Heston is correct for the block. Nice and All done. Right. Double the pot. Mm. A lot of four shot paid off for you there. We got one thousand six hundred dollars now in the pot. We'll shuffle. <laughs> And Steve, it's your selection. Um, the center one for the block, right. I guess. Presidential trivia. A two-part question under presidential trivia. You'll have some extra time to think about it. All right. Here comes your mm -hmm. question under presidential tri trivia. In 1863, what proclamation freed the slaves from slavery in certain areas of the USA? I need you to, A, first name the proclamation, and 
Then secondly, name the president that, that issued the proclamation. All right? Here's your extra time to think about it. All right, Steve. What? Once again, in 1863, what proclamation freed the slaves from slavery in certain areas of the USA? I need you to name the proclamation and then name the president who issued it. Oh, man. I, I could take a guess like the president, but I don't know about the first one. Well, mm. I, I need an answer. Mm. So do I. Uh, I'm going to pass. Uh, I'm sorry. Tough break. Well, the proclamation we All were right. looking for was the Emancipation Proclamation, and that and that oh, was by, issued okay. by the man who freed the slaves in the United States. That was President Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln was mm -hmm. the president there. All right, no box there. Sixteen hundred dollars remains in the pot. We'll shuffle the categories. And Kevin, this is a break for you. All right, let's go with past, present, and future. I get this two-part question correct under past, present, and future. It's tic tac toe. $1,800, and you'll be headed back to the bonus round. All right. Once okay. again, here is your past, present, and future question. There are four states that make up the Four Corners Monument in the out in the mountain ranges of the Rockies in the United States. For tic-tac-toe and $1,800, I need you to name two of the four states. Here's your extra time to think about it. All right, Kevin. All right, I think I know all four, but I'm pretty sure uh, two of them are Utah and Nevada. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, Utah, no, no. what? Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Yes, those were the four it? we were looking oh, for. Oh, man, where did Nevada? Yeah, Nevada, you're uh, just a little further west there. Yeah. All right, no tic-tac-toe this time. $1,600 remains in the pot. We'll shuffle. And, Steve, your selection. Uh, past, present, future, I guess. All right, for, th for the block, under past, present, future, again, another two-parter. Here is your question. There are four national parks that are inhabited in the state of Colorado. I just need you to give me two of the national parks in the state of Colorado, right? Here's your extra time to think about it. All right. All right, Steve. I need you to name two of the national parks that are located in the state of Colorado. No guess. No guesses. Sorry. Oh. Uh, the four parks that are located in the state of Colorado are the Rocky Mountain National Park, the Mesa Verde National Park, the Great Sand Dunes mm -hmm. National Park, and the Black Canyon of the Guinnison National Park. Those are all located in the state of Colorado. All right, $1,600 remains in the pot. We'll shuffle them, move them around. And Kevin, we're back to you. All right, presidential trivia. All right, get this question correct under presidential trivia. It's tic-tac-toe, $1,800, and you'll be headed back to the bonus round. Here comes your question under presidential trivia. I was born in 1913 and was only 47 when I lost my first election as the presidential candidate. But I was finally inaugurated only 11 days after my 56th birthday. For tic-tac-toe and $1,800, I need you to name that president. That's the first one. And for the second one, this 33rd president started his career by running a hat shop in Missouri. He served from 1945, after the death of Franklin Roosevelt, to 1953. Perhaps he used his left hand to sign the peace treaty with Japan, which officially ended World War II. I need you to name that president, right? Here's your extra time to think about. It. All right, Kevin, which one would you like to answer first? Um, the second one is Truman. That is correct. 
And now, now for oh. Tic Tac Doe and eighteen hundred dollars. I'll repeat it. I was born in 1913 and was only 47 when I lost my first election as the presidential candidate. But I was finally inaugurated only 11 days after my 56th birthday. For Tic Tac Doe and eighteen hundred dollars, name the president. Um, I, I'm between a couple, but I'm gonna guess uh, Gerald Ford. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oh, you were no. you were close. Anybody else got a guess? I know it. I think I what know is it. it. Richard it Nixon. Is Nixon, that's the one we're looking for mm. there. Uh, Darn it. All right, no box there. Sixteen hundred dollars <laughs> remains in the pot. We'll shuffle them around. And Steve, we're back to you. Past, present, future again. <laughs> All right, somebody's got to get this center box here for the block. <laughs> All right, here's your question Question under past, present, and future. All right, Steve, there are four horsemen of the apocalypse. For the center box, I just need you to give me two of them. All right, here's your extra time to think about it. <laughs> All right, Steve. I need you to name me two of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. No idea. Hmm. Ric Flair and Lex Luger. That's the only horseman I know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, as a wrestling fan, I would say you're absolutely right, and I would give you the box, but unfortunately, my producer says you're wrong in this case. The four oh, well. horsemen of the apocalypse we're looking for are conquest, war, famine and death those are the four horsemen of the apocalypse so no box there sixteen hundred dollars remains in the pot we'll shuffle one more time and we're back to you kevin okay let's try it again pop culture all right get this question correct under pop culture in the center it's tic-tac-toe eighteen hundred dollars and you'll be headed to the bonus round all right for your pop culture question, it's a two-parter. All right, I need you to name, give me the first names of the famous duo known as Simon and Garfunkel. All right, I need the first names of the duo known as Simon and Garfunkel. Here's your extra time to think about it. Alright, Kevin, for Tic Tac Toe, $1,800, what are the first names of the duo Simon and Garfunkel? Paul and Art. That is correct for Tic Tac Toe. Oh. Well done. Oh. Woo. Good game, Steve. I apologize. I was wrong on the math there. It's worth $300 for the center box. You actually have Tic Tac Toe and $1,900. We're going to add that to your winnings right now, giving you a grand two-game total now of $9,300. And you'll be headed back to the bonus round here in just a moment. Well, Steve, you put up a heck of a fight there in that game. Just fortunately, just that center box eluded just about everybody in that one. Yeah. But you oh, played well. a wonderful game, and I definitely want to have you back for another episode. All right, Thank no you. problem. Appreciate it. All right, Kevin, let's come on over here and see if you can beat this dragon. Let's go the bonus round. All right. All right, Kevin, welcome back to Bonus Land here. You know how this works. Your objective is to get to $1,000 on the board or find Tick Attack before you find our friend Fluffy the Dragon in the center. If you do, you'll win the cash you'll win your cash times the number of uncovered boxes remaining on the board. If you find Tic Tac on any of your two picks, you pick when the Tic Tac jackpot, which currently stands at $15,000. However, if you can find Tic Tac on your first right. two picks, we'll double it and make it $30,000, and you'll have a chance to play the super bonus game. All right? All right, best of luck to you. And remember, if you feel like you're going to find the dragon at any time, you can stop and take the winnings that you already have earned. All right? Let's shuffle the board. Fluffy, go hide somewhere and stay there. All right, nine numbers on the board. Where would you like to begin? You can get some help from the audience right, if you we'll like. We'll see. Yeah, I did I not did like not the four corners in the main game. 
Uh, that did not help me. So uh, let's try. I don't know. Anyone have a suggestion? Eight. Yeah, I like eight. The month the month I was born, August. Let's go for All right, eight. Looking for the August box number eight. The snowman at the bottom gives us. It's attack. Ooh, all right. Ooh. It's attack. You find Ooh. tick on this pick, I will give you thirty thousand dollars. All right. Let's go. I feel six. Number six. We want to see a tick. <laughs> Let's give away thirty thousand dollars behind six. We got the pick of the hey. jackpot. Oh. 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 Winner, winner. Nicely done, Kevin. That is thirty thousand dollars. A our third yeah. double jackpot winner of the season. Nicely done. Now, let's see if you can be the first man to pull off a successful double double here. Ooh. Let's play the super bonus game. You have seven boxes remaining on the board. Fluffy the dragon is hiding behind one of them. If you can find mm. Fluffy, I will double that money and make it $60,000, our biggest bonus round win of the season. If you don't, no pressure. If you don't find the dragon, you'll still have a chance to earn some more bonus money because whatever you find behind your box, I will multiply it by 10 and add that to your winnings. Okay. I have a feeling, since I was staying away from the corners... In the first round. I'm going to say Fluffy is behind number one. All right. We're looking for a dragon behind number one. For $60,000, is the dragon behind one? No. Oh. Oh. Well, that's another $4,000 hey, added it. to your score, giving you a bonus round win of $34,000. Add it right. to your winnings. Gives you now a two game cash winnings total $43,300. Well done. All right. Well done Thank indeed. You. All right. Where, guys, where do you think the dragon was hiding at? Five. 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 I hear, five. Three. I hear two. Okay. I hear three. Let's see. Where was the dragon at? It was Ooh. number two. Hey. Number said two. That's where the right, dragon right was. Well, still, congrats. Whoever said to give this man a cookie. Absolutely. Or a biscuit. Yeah, or, or at least some type of snack cake. Any of them will do <laughs> that. Well, nicely done, Kevin. $43,300 cash is all yours. And Thank you're still you. my reigning interim champion. And you're going to play another player right after this commercial break. Folks, we're going to need to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Tic Tac Toe right after this. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys. Welcome back to Tic Tac Toe. Kevin doing a phenomenal job in that last bonus round, picking up $34,000 in cash, bringing his total now up to $43,300. And we'll see if he can make his way up the leaderboard again, uh, facing against his next opponent, playing in the circle position. This time, we got Peach. Peach, welcome back to the show. Hey, yo, Brandon. How's it going? Fantastic. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh, well, you know, it's another fine day for Tic Tac Dope. It is, and it's clearly we've given away some dough on this show today. Are you ready to see if you can take some of it in the interim championship as well? Uh, yeah, let's bring it on. All right, well, good luck to both of you gentlemen. Let's take a look at the subjects for this game of Tic-Tac-Toe. And they are... We have presidential trivia again, because it's election day. The secret category. We got television, fun and games... Kyle's favorite, Anything Goes. We're booked, Double or Nothing, the top ten, and take a letter. Of course, as you know, uh, Double or Nothing, you have a chance to earn two boxes in the same turn. And, of course, the top ten is a, another top ten list. Uh, I've got answers. I'll give you a subject. You have to give me, whoever gives me the higher answer on that list takes the box. Okay? Game number two underway for this episode of Tic-Tac-Toe. Kevin, you're the reigning champion. You start. All right, let's try uh, Anything Goes. Yes, yeah. yeah, you got to say it with a lot of nasal when you do it. Anything <laughs> Goes. It's like, well, I'm trying to think of the classic um, um, actress who used to do that like on a comedy show back in the day, but I don't remember. Right. I was just thinking of the musical, but that works too. <laughs> right. All right, it's a two-part question under Anything Goes, and you'll have some extra time to think about it here, okay? Okay. Your first uh, first one under anything goes is what fruit do the Portuguese call 
Abacaxi. That's A B A C A X I. What fruit do the Portuguese call Abacaxi? And that's the first one. The second one is which Dunkin' Donuts product is endorsed by Rachel Ray since she claims she can't make it herself? All right, here's your extra time to think about it. <laughs> Kevin, which one would you like to answer first? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I have, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess. I don't. The first one All right. sounds like a weird Spanish word. All right. What, um, what fruit did I, the Portuguese yeah. call abacaxi? That's some weird. I took four years of Spanish in high school. I'm gonna pineapple. I'm gonna guess. That's correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> and for the center box, right. and for the center box, which Dunkin' Donuts product is endorsed by Rachel Ray since she claims she can't make it herself? Huh. I don't remember the last time I've been doing Dunkin' Donuts. I just know they have donuts and coffee, and I know people like their coffee, so I'm gonna guess Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I don't know. Well, some you better go find you a four leaf clover because you are the luckiest what? man in the room right now. You're right. <laughs> Wow. Nicely Get done. Wow. Yes, Rachel Ray, one of the be- one of the most famous chefs in the world, or famous TV personality Ooh. cooks, can't make a cup really? of coffee to save her life. Go <laughs> figure. All right. Well, well done. Good guesses. Three hundred dollars in the pot for that center box. Let's shuffle the categories. And Peach, you get your first crack of the board. What would you like? I am at a loss for words here. <laughs> Me too. Gosh. Um, let's go double or nothing. All right, going double. I need to make up some ground. All right, going double or nothing, top of the board. You're only one box behind. Not a lot of ground to make up, but you can do it right here. If you can get the first half of the double or nothing question, all right? Okay. Here it is. During World War II, what were U-boats? Again, during World War II, what were your bo- U-boats? Is it were they A aircraft carriers, B submarines, C destroyers, or D merchant ships? I'm pretty sure they were submarines. And submarines yeah. is correct. Now, do you want to take that box or do you want to risk it and go for double or nothing? Uh, I'm gonna risk it and go with presidential trivia. I think I know my presidents. Alright, presidential trivia at the bottom. This isn't just trivia just about uh, president, this is about everything in um, U.S. Uh, government and history a little bit, too. But most of the questions are, right. are surrounded by, uh, with, uh, by the presidents, all right? Here, come, all right? here comes your question. Under presidential trivia, it's this. In 1816, at the age of eight, I accomplished an expedition traveling along the Nanchez Trace. We stayed for several weeks at the Hammer- Hermitage, the home of a renowned hero of World of the War of 1812, and a future president of the United States of America, I found him to always, I found him always very gentle and considerate. Who did I stay with? What former president is this, or am I describing? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Sure. In 1816, at the age of eight, I ac- I accompanied an expedition traveling along the Nanchez Trace. We stayed for several weeks at the Hermitage, the home of a renowned hero of the War of 1812 and future president of the United States. I found him always very gentle and considerate. Who did I stay with? Oh, God. Um. Andrew Jackson? Andrew Jackson is correct for a successful double or nothing. Well done. I don't believe it. <laughs> wow. Nice. Nicely played there, Peach. Successful double or nothing. Two boxes there. We'll put $400 in the pot, bringing it up to 700 and we'll shuffle. And hey, Kevin, we're back to you. You got a tough opponent this time this around. One bizarre hmm. game. Yeah. Uh, let's try fun and games. Fun and games. Lower right-hand corner. Here comes your question under fun and games. All right. True or false, Kevin? The video game company Nintendo got its start by manufacturing playing cards. Is that statement true or false? 
I did a project on Nintendo in high school. That is true. That is true. You're right. Put an X to the hey. board. Nine hundred dollars in the pot now. We'll shuffle the categories. And we're back to you, Peach. Please select. Huh. Uh, I'll try We're Booked. We're Booked, upper left-hand corner. Get this question right. You'll have it. In Greek mythology, who was the goddess of love? For the block, name her. <clears throat> In Greek mythology? Yes. Not Roman mythology. Correct. In Greek mythology, who <laughs> was the goddess of love? Uh, would that be Aphrodite? Aphrodite is correct. You got the block. Nicely done. Okay. Put another O on the board there. Up to $1,100 in the pot. Let's shuffle. And control goes back to you, Kevin. Ooh, I'm going to have to go with double or nothing. All right, going double or nothing, upper right-hand corner. Get this question correct, you'll have a block, but you'll have a chance to go for another box, all right? Here comes your okay. double or nothing question. All right, Kevin, what poker hand would you be holding if you had a pair and a three of a kind in the same hand? A full house. That is correct. Now, you have the block now. Uh, Do you want to risk yeah. it and go for double or nothing? Um, no, I will take it. All right, he's going to stop and take the box. All right, put an X up there. You got the block. $1,300 now in the pot. We'll shuffle the categories. And we'll send it back to you, Peach. Oh, uh, man. If only the double or nothing was still there. <laughs> um, let's... Well, I'll take presidential trivia for one of the blocks. All right, presidential <laughs> trivia in the lower left-hand corner. Here comes your presidential trivia question. Which, pre which U.S. president could write Greek with one hand and Latin with the other at the same time? Incidentally, a well-known cat was indirectly named after him. For the block, name the president. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> was it... I think of James Buchanan. No, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. It, it wasn't James, but it wasn't Buchanan. The clue there was uh, a well-known cat was named after him. And by cat, I was looking mm. for Garfield. James Garfield oh. was the answer there. All right, $1,300 remains in the pot. We'll shuffle the categories, move them around. And Kevin, we're back to you. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. This poses well, an interesting situation. It sure does. Can you remind, what does top ten mean again? Is that the auction type thing? Yeah, right? it's a, it's a, I give you a list that has ten answers to it. You're each going to give me an answer. Whoever gives me the higher answer on the list takes the box. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a little risk. I don't know, man. Let's do the double or nothing. All right, going double or nothing, right side of the board. Get this question right under double or nothing. You potentially could have tic-tac-toe in $1,500, but, of course, you have a chance to risk it and go for double or nothing, maybe pick up a little more cash. Here comes your double right. or nothing question. Which of these is the southernmost point in the state of Florida? Again, which of these is the most southernmost point in the state of Florida? Is it A, Key West, B, Cocoa Beach, C, Miami, or D, St. Petersburg? Um, before you said the choices, I was thinking Key West, so I'm going to guess Key West. Key West is correct. Hey. Now, you have that box. You can keep it, or you can risk it and go for double or nothing, pick up another $200. Uh, I'm going to go for the sure thing and keep the box. All right, you got Tic-Tac-Doe. Whoa. Whoa. Good game, Peach. That was one bizarre game. I agree. <laughs> Some wild answers flying all over the place, but good ones nonetheless. $1,500 more, Kevin, added to your winnings brings you now up to a total of $44,800, and you'll be facing the dragon here in just a minute. Well, Pete, you definitely gave him a run for his money in that one, and I thought Oof. at one point you had it won. 
But unfortunately, things didn't quite go your way this time. We well, definitely like, enjoy having you on the show, and we want you back for another game. Yeah, I like that. I still need to beat that dragon. You will get your <laughs> chance, my friend. There are plenty of episodes still remaining this season. I know you'll beat the dragon at some point down the road. But it will not be this episode. Because right now, Kevin's going to have a chance to see if he can beat the dragon Ooh. again for a lot more money. Kevin, come on back over here. Let's play the round. All right, Kevin, you you made it back to bonus round once again. This time, that since you won the Tic Tac jackpot in the last one, we reset it back to ten thousand uh, dollars. If you get Tic Tac again on your first two picks, I will double it again and make it twenty thousand dollars. You have a chance to play the super bonus game. All right. Okay. Good luck to you. Let's shuffle the board. Fluffy, go hide somewhere. Hmm. All right, Kevin. Nine numbers of the board again. Where would you like to start this time? Oh, I don't know. Anybody have any suggestions? I feel like I've gotten too lucky the past two times. Guys, you need what? some help. Guys, call out some anyone, numbers. Anyone? Anyone? Seven. Seven. Four. Ooh. Okay, I heard lucky number seven first from a couple people, so let's go with seven. All right, it says number seven, lower left-hand corner, behind box seven. Oh, oh my goodness. Right. It's Boy. a <laughs> Well, I believe we were here just a f little yes. while ago. This time you need the tack for $20,000 if you can find it. Where's what do you guys the tack hiding? Help three. me last time. Two! Okay. Three! Ooh, three, two. Those are both good numbers. I was born August 2nd, and two worked the very first time last episode, so I'm going to go for the two. All right, going for number two. If there is a tack behind number two, you've just earned another $20,000. Behind the little deuce, we have... Oh, no, okay. no double jackpot this yeah. time. You got 250. Right. You got okay. 250. That means you need 750 or a tack to win. Okay, let's go with number three. Behind number three, right next door. Behind three. That's five hundred dollars. Up to seven hundred and fifty now. You need two hundred and fifty mm. more or attack. I'm gonna say eight. Number eight, bottom of the board. This is where you won big last time. Behind eight. Every hey. other you got the win. Nicely done. Ooh. Nicely done, Kevin. You got one thousand fifty dollars. We're gonna multiply that by the five remaining boxes on. the Board, All right. Giving you a cash jackpot this time of five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. All right. Add to your winnings brings you now up to a three game cash winnings total fifty thousand fifty dollars. That will pay off my loans. <laughs> nicely and done. Some. Nicely done. Let's take Thank a look you. at the rest of the board, see where was the dragon hiding? Dragon was dead Ooh, in the center, number no. five. And you said number six again. Tax will give you $20,000. Right. Yeah. Well, with $50,050 and three wins, that definitely secures your spot in the top eight right now. However, you're going to get a few more wins to make a run at Marty's total, who's currently eight wins over $80,000. But you're definitely on the fast track there, Kevin. We're going to take another right. commercial break. And we got, we'll be back for one more game here on Tic Tac Doe. Don't go anywhere. Ooh, Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin continues to keep on winning here up to $50,050. And three Oof. successful wins, looking to make it four. Now, Kevin, I will tell you right now, if you're able to win this game with the current amount of cash that you have in your in your bank right now, it would put you second on the high Ooh. score leaderboard, only behind Marty with his eight wins and I believe over eighty three thousand dollars. So wow, gotta, sounds good. Got a ways to go, but you could take second if you can beat your opponent this time. But it's not going to be an easy task. Because playing in the circle position this time, we have our own our own Canadian Mark. Mark, welcome. Thank you. Fantastic. It's been a minute since you've been on the show, but glad to have you back. Are you ready to see if you can stop Kevin's winning streak? I am. 
<laughs> well, anyway, best of luck to both of you in this one. And let's take a look at our final nine subjects for this game of Tic-Tac-Toe. And they are... We have Athletic Feats, The Secret Category, Music, Geek Chic, Presidential Trivia, Seesaw, Food and Drink, Take a Letter, and The Challenge Category. Now, Seesaw is a list category with 10 answers. I'll give you the subject. You go back and forth trying to guess answers off the list until one if you cannot successfully do it. And then the challenge category is a, is, I'll read, is a multiple choice question. I'll read you the question. You'll have a choice to either answer it or pass it to your opponent. Once you've decided that, then I will read them the answers to that question. If uh, they choose correctly, they get the box. If they're wrong, the person who challenged them takes the box. All right? Final game on this episode of Tic-Tac-Toe. We're underway. And, Kevin, you get to start once again. Please select. All right. Let's go with presidential trivia. Presidential trivia and the center box. Again, a two-part question worth $300. And you'll have some extra time to think about it. All right? Okay. Here comes your two-part question. First off, which future U.S. president was the main subject of the movie PT-109? PT-109, that's the first one. And the second one is, which former U.S. president is pictured on the U.S. $500 bill? This bill is no longer being printed, but some still exist as they are still legal tender. Here's a hint, he was president during the Spanish-American War. All right, here's your extra time to think about it. All right, Kevin, which one would you like to answer first? Um, PT-109, I think, was about JFK. That is correct. It was about John F. Kennedy. And now for the center box, which former president is... On the pictured on the five hundred dollar bill. Oh. No, Spanish Spanish American War. It's a while ago. Well, I'm gonna guess Garfield. No, I'm sorry, no. that's incorrect. Ah. Um, we're looking for ah. William McKinley. M McKinley's oh. the president on the five hundred dollar yeah. bill. All right, no box there. We'll shuffle the categories around. <laughs> And Mark, you get your first crack at the board. Where would you like to go? Hey, Brandon. Yes. Take a letter. <laughs> Choose a letter. <laughs> All right, take take a letter. Here comes your question under take a letter. All right, Mark, your letter is M. Letter M. What M what? is an insect of the order Lepidoptera? That's L-E-P-I-D-O-P-T-E-R-A. Lepidoptera. It starts with an M? Correct. It's an insect. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes. What M yes. is an insect of the order Lepidoptera? Uh, okay, it starts with an M, uh, let's see. Probably is the wrong answer, but I'll... Butterfly. What is it? Monarch Butterfly. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. You're, you're, in, the, you're in the right neighborhood. However, the one we were looking for is a moth. It's a moth. Oh, a moth. Yeah. All right, no box there under take a letter. We'll shuffle the categories around. And we'll send it back to Kevin. Geek Chic. Geek Chic and the center box. Again, a two-part question. You'll have some extra time to think about it. All right. Kevin, under Geek Chic, I need you to name me the first two elements that you'll find on the periodic table of elements. The first two elements you find on the periodic table of elements. Here's your extra time okay. to think about it. Man, if I don't get this right, I can't be a science teacher. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what are they? I believe it is hydrogen and helium. In that order, you are correct. Well done. Put an Yay. X on the board. 
$300 in the pot. Let's shuffle the categories around. And we're back to you, Mark. Please select. Okay, well, I can't take a letter again. Not this time. Okay, um, I will go with poop and pee. I mean, food and drink. No, Mark, it's called food and drink. Get it right or pay the Bazoo. price. Bazoo! <laughs> uh, you're such a wise guy here. All right, food and drink. Here is your question. Under food and drink. It's a true or false question, Mark. True or false? In large doses, nutmeg is poisonous to humans. Is that statement true or false? Um, let's see. Well, a little too much spice can sometimes be a bad thing. So I will say... What was that? True. True is correct. Put an O on the board. You're nicely done. $500 now in the pot. Let's move them around. And control goes back to you, Kip. Uh, let's try food and drink. Food and drink once again, lower right-hand corner. Here comes your question on food and drink. What fruit comes in such varieties as Kalamata, Manazillo, and Queen? In what mm. fruit comes in such varieties as Kalamata, Manazillo, and Queen? And I'm actually looking at this, and I'm very surprised that this isn't actually a fruit. But it, I believe it is. Um, I haven't heard any of those, but I know manzana in Spanish is apple, so I'm going to guess apple. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> I actually, I think I know it, uh, Brandon. Okay, what is it? I believe correctly, the first one you're trying to say was Kalamata. Kalamata, yes. which were our olives. Yes. Oh, olives. interesting. Olives are classified as a fruit. Go figure that one out. Well, surprisingly enough, right? right. All right. <laughs> learn something new every day. Yep. Every day on Tic Tac Doe, I swear I learned something new from all this, all this trivia. See? Educational and fun. That's Tic Tac Doe. <laughs> All right, $500 in the pot. We'll shuffle the categories now. Mark, back to you. Okay. I think I will go with drink again. Food and drink, lower left-hand corner. All right, here comes your question. Under food and drink, what deli meat is seasoned brisket that has been cured, smoked, and cooked? Once again, what deli meat is seasoned brisket that has been cured, smoked, and cooked? Hmm. It's a deli meat, you said? Yes. I think I use this particular meat sandwiches. So I'm going to say that it's prosciutto. I'm sorry, say that again, you were breaking up. Prosciutto. No, I'm sorry. That's not what we're looking for. It's a more common deli meat. It's pastrami. Pastrami. Oh, pastrami. Yeah. Oh. Pastrami. Prosciutto, prosciutto is an Italian type of ham. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, $500 remains in the pot. We'll move the categories around again. And Kevin, we're back to you. Who? Oh, uh, neither of the spaces I like have the category I like, but let's try music. Music in the upper right-hand corner. Here comes your question under music. Under the question category of music, we all know that uh, famous musician Stevie Wonder is blind, so he can't really see. So how does Stevie Wonder endorse his contracts? Hmm. Well, he can't... <sighs> Interesting. I'm going to say... Mm. Can't write. Not writing in Braille, but I don't know. Uh, he he can't see, so he uh, he <laughs> he. Maybe this is a trick question because I think if you can't see, you can still sign your name. So I'm gonna say he signs his name. No, I'm sorry, it's incorrect. No, not a shouldn't it be the obvious answer? 
No. Like signs with an X. That's what was my first obvious no, answer. No. But no, no, it should be Braille. No, it's oh. not it either. Really? Mm -hmm. Unique fact, Stevie Wonder signs all of his contracts using his fingerprint. Oh, that makes wow. sense. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. It's a unique signature exclusively only to him. Therefore, it's a legally binding on any contract. Again, wow. interesting stuff you learn. Five hundred dollars for a major the park. Cool. We'll shuffle, and we're over to you, Mark. Okay, uh, let's if food and drink, please. Food and drink once again. More food and drink questions. Here it is. All right, under food and drink, Mark. Where is the cheese located in a traditional Juicy Lucy cheeseburger? Where is the cheese located? Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, probably way off base, but like maybe. Well, I usually eat my hamburgers. If there's cheese on my hamburgers, I like grill on top of the patty. So say on top of the meat. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry. Another unique fact about the juicy Lucy: the um, cheese can be found actually inside the pen on the juicy Lucy, located inside oh. the hamburger. So once, no, I actually knew. Yeah, so, so once they get once it gets grilled up, the cheese really congeals and melts in the inside. It's amazing and delicious too, might I add. Yes, it is. All right, five hundred dollars still in the pot. I shuffle them once again. And Kevin, we're back to you. Let's take a letter. Take a letter. All right, here comes your take a letter question. All right, Kevin, your letter for this question is P. Letter P. Okay. What P is a document demanding action which is signed by a lot of people? A petition? Petition is correct. Well done. Woo! Put an X on the board there. $700 now on the pot. Let's shuffle. And control goes back to you, Mark. Okay, well, food and drink is work. Well, <laughs> that mean, sarcastic. Geek chic to block. All right, geek chic for the block. Get this question correct. You have a diagonal block. Here it is. All right, Mark. The proper scientific name for this cold weather animal is Ursus martimus. For the block, what's its rank, what's its more common name? Cold weather animal. Would that be the polar bear? That would be correct. Good job. You got a block. Oh, goes on the board there. Nine hundred dollars now in the pot. Let's shuffle. And we're back to you, Kim. Got to go with presidential trivia for the block. All right, get this question correct. On a presidential trivia, you'll have a horizontal block. Here comes your presidential trivia question. Leaving office in March 1909, President Theodore Roosevelt runs for a non-consecutive term in the 1912 election as a third-party candidate for what party? That's also a name of a popular insurance company. For the block... Name the party. Progressive? Progressive is correct. Nicely done. Yeah. Put an X on the board there. $1,100 now in the pot. Let's shuffle the categories. All right, Mark, over okay. to you. Okay, I am faced with a rather interesting... I... There's, I could go for the block in one of two boxes. That would leave the other exposed to get him a potential win. Uh, well, since I am a generally sports uh, person, let's try athletic feats for a block. All right, going athletic feats, bottom four. 
Here comes your question for a horizontal block. All right, Mark. The San Francisco Giants, uh, uh, the San Francisco Giants Major League Baseball team, originally started in what city? For the block, name it. Uh, San Francisco Giants. Correct. I believe the NFL team also shares this name. New York. New York is correct. You got the block. Well done. Oh, on the board, thirteen hundred dollars down the pot. Let's move the categories around again. And control goes back to Kevin. Hmm. I guess we'll try the presidential trivia for the tic tac toe. All right, get this question correct under presidential trivia. It's tic tac toe, fifteen hundred dollars, and you'll be headed back to the bonus round one more time. Here's your question under presidential trivia. When asked during a debate between the candidates for the presidency if he was not too old at 73 years of age, which incumbent, hoping for a second term, said, I want you to know that, also, I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I'm not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. For <laughs> tic-tac-toe and $1,500, name this president. Was it Ronald Reagan? Reagan's right for Tic Tac Toe! Well done, Kevin. You are making a run of things here. Another $1,500 added to your winnings brings you up to a grand total now of $51,550. And you'll be headed back to the bonus round here in just a moment. All right. Good game, sir. Thank yes, you. Mark, Good game, Mark. Mark, you played a great game there. Just ran up on a couple tough ticket letter or questions there, but you're not leaving us empty handed. We got some nice parting gifts for you, and definitely we'll have you back for another episode. All right. All right, Kevin. Let's see if you can make it three for three oh. against the dragon. All Let's right. go to the bonus round one more time. Here we go. Okay. Last chance here to see if you can make it a clean sweep on this episode here. Your Tic Tac jackpot at this game stands at $11,000. If you can get it in your first two picks, it doubles to $22,000. All right? All right. Good luck to you. Let's move. The, let's shuffle all the amounts around. Hide the dragon. A long shuffle on that one. And when you're ready, start picking. All right. The audience is not... Led me wrong yet, so any numbers, you guys? You need some help, guys. Try them out. Uh, All right. He was hiding in number five last game, so try starting. I, well, you know, it's completely random. I heard one first, so I'm going to go with one. All right, going one up in the upper left-hand corner behind box one. We have two hey, fifty. All right. All right. No double jackpot this time, but still have a chance at 11000 You need 750 or ticket tech. Let's try five. Behind five. Dent center of the board. And, oh. and again. Fluffy runs <laughs> a perfect game. Uh, yeah, kid. Uh, see, Bad Fluffy. See, the thing about it is a lot of people think that the dragon will not appear in the same box twice. But he, can, he is, but he can, right? But he has appeared in that mul the same box multiple times this season. People have uh -huh. got to learn. <laughs> it can happen. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's the computer for you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it happened to you this time there. So no money this That's time okay. around. Let's reveal the rest of the board, show you everything yeah. was. Tick was behind number two. Oh. Tack was behind number nine. Uh, I called nine. Well, oh, well Kevin, darn. no more bonus money for you. But you now have That's a right. four-game cash winnings of $51,550. Oh, right. You're now second on the leaderboard. You need, you need three more wins and about another $32,000 to make it all the way to the top of the leaderboard and take over Marty's spot at number one. But will he all do right. it? We'll have to find out next time because we're all out of time for this episode. Audience, did you guys have a good time watching this episode? 
Yes. Yep. That was great to hear. We want to thank you guys out there in the audience for joining us today. I want to thank you guys at home on YouTube land watching. Remember, if you like what you see here on Tic-Tac-Toe, make sure you leave a like rating on the video. And if you would like to become a contestant on Tic-Tac-Toe or join the DGSN and enjoy all the great games we have here, make sure you leave a comment down below saying you're interested. We'll give you all the information. It's absolutely free. And you can come and join us for some great times here in the DGSN. All right, from all of us here on Tic Tac Toe, I'm Brandon Scruggs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time for another game of Tic Tac Toe. Bye for now, folks. Don't forget to subscribe to the Democratizing Network for great more content like this one.